So, what have we got then? A nice, reasonably sized crane, dockside crane, nothing too big, a little bit big to store, I don't know whether I'm going to take this one apart or not. Now it's been fiddled with, it's pretty good, although I did have to fiddle, I have gone away from the set in a couple of ways. In theory it should work quite well, and it could, it could work okay as per the build, but I've improved it, some with the parts in the set, some not. Some for reasons of saving damage to decent plates, and there's other reasons as well. One is because it wouldn't work. <laughs> right, what we got then? Well, first of all, the one you can see there, this big crank handle here. It's a built-up crank handle, largely as the set build, with a, an additional feature. Because of the construction of the body, the cab if you like, it's quite flexible in and out. And there was an issue with this lofting mechanism, which meant, one, it only moved a little bit, but didn't adjust much up and down. So I've changed that, which brought a problem in itself. Let's have a look at that. This crank angle is built up out of several parts. This end is largely as the design, but when it was built as the design, it was about half inch further in here. Now this was a problem because it caught the end of this double angled strip. It meant that you only had a fraction movement and thus the boom did not move much at all. The beauty of it was that under load it would stay where it was. But what's the point of having a lofting feature if you can't move it very much? Or, as you can see here, it's now further out to clear that double angled strip. What's the point if it's going to drop down under the slightest load? So, what I did in the end, I added a modern rubber grommet and some packing washers and a lock nut and adjusted it so that there's enough friction to grip on here. The problem is this is quite flexible, this bodywork. The body is largely made out of these flexible strips, one and a half inch by five and a half inch for most of it. There's not much in the way of support inside, so it flexes in and out. Therefore, you can't push on it too much because it could damage the plate and could make it collapse, I suppose, if you was really heavy with it. But I've got it just enough now, so it moves quite nicely. As you can see there, there's no weight on the hook, but you've got the weight of the boom now extending horizontally, and it's holding nicely. Just notice a problem that may be, well, a problem with extensive use. Now that's the uh, boom coming down now, and here you can see the cord runs through this angle bracket. With a bit of load on that, I can see that wearing through and snapping. So, I need to think about doing something about that, but I suppose we could add a pulley in there with a couple of angle brackets either side. That would be away from the set parts, of course, because I think most of them have all been used. But it does work quite nicely. You can feel the sort of rubbing of that cord through that angle bracket. But it's lovely now with that little grommet on. Here you can see the main surface area that the three and a half inch pulley that forms half of the bearing, the other half of course being these pulleys, for the cab to rotate on. The original design does not have lock nuts here and there's plenty of nuts spare in the set to do so. What it essentially means is it's fixed on these, although they are plastic it would run okay, but why not use lock nuts and it runs so freely now, of course it's only manually done by moving it round with your hand, but it does work quite nicely. And all we have to do is put this three and a half inch pulley's boss over and onto the pivot pin there. Like that. And it all runs very freely. There's no lubrication whatsoever on that bearing and it runs nice, quite balanced. Now as you can see, a lot of the washers, certainly on the roof, and there's a lot more nuts and bolts used on the roof than it shows in the instructions, all the bolts and the nuts are from the set, but as you can see the zinc washers are not from the set because you should be able to see some brass coloured washers here and there. But there's not enough of them in the set and I didn't want to damage the largely very good condition parts and the flexible plates are very easy to damage 
in the slotted strips. So for example, outside the instructions, here you can see there's washers used to help protect the plates where there's slotted strips. There's also a lot more bolts used to form the shape of the roof and these plates are from Mustache Parts because they're not bad but there's a few creases in this one and I didn't want to ruin really good flexible plates that were in the set. There were four parts in this set I added outside things like the extra washers. The two parts missing that more or less stopped you building this as per the design were these two narrow strips here. They should be yellow, I hadn't got any yellow ones at the time, they are zinc and the other two parts are inside on the motor and we'll show you them in a second or two. The motor has a switch on it itself as well, we can just see there. It's on in the up or the down position and off in the centre position and of course you can reverse the direction of the motor by having it up or totally down. But you don't need that control for this, although you could have it if you wanted to, but it's very awkward to get inside there and mess around with that. So just leave it in one position on either up or totally down. Now one of the mods, but this one is due to having no parts. The set itself was very good, most of the parts little used, but there were no little plugs for the wires to go into the motor connections there. So I've used some of the modern quick snaps, pinched a little bit, and they just about go in and do the job. This is the drive to the drum for the hook and also you can see the mechanism for the lufting which is manual. Anyway this 3 volt motor drives directly off the shaft here which you can just see. There's no pulley. The square section of the rubber band doesn't do a bad job of keeping everything in line but it can move about side to side and of course it could come off. However it's very close to the side here, right in the side. So. You can, it's just out of shot there, but it's very close to the side of the body there of the crane. So it's not really going to come off. Might get trapped though, but so far so good. The one and a half inch pulley turns this just, just about in shot I think, just about there. There's a 15 tooth pinion gear onto this 60 tooth gear here, which in turn drives the drum. Right, let's give the lifting action a bit of action. This is the battery box control box as well, centre is off and you'll have forward and reverse so here we go and it's quite smooth although I have added a little bit of oil to the gears and the odd few pivots inside the body there and it is rather decent right this bunch of keys weighs 104 grams You can tell it's under load, but it seems to work okay. Let's see what else we've got, a little bit heavier. Right here we've got my Royal Enfield, sort of, Model 180 motorbike. The Magic Motor forming the frame for the bike. It has been seen before in a video. It weighs 348 grams. Well, it's trying. Of course, it hasn't got the full weight yet. It's not tipping over. The lufting's not dropping. And Oh, it's, it's trying, it's trying, it stops start a bit, yeah, I think really, um, let's say 275 grams maximum lift, and it hasn't fallen over, and the lufting's worked great, so my little brake idea is doing alright, although I've had to adjust it a couple of times, but uh, yeah, that's alright, so let's say 250-275 gram lift, with no hands on messing or holding the lofting. Now the lofting, very simple, built up crank with my extra little brake, works quite smooth now. But it's holding nice.
So there you go folks, the Meccano Multi-Kit Crane Building Set Dockside Crane from around about 1976. And there are the stickers I didn't use. That's it for now folks, bye for now.